So, as promised, this week we're going to install the couple sensors that came with that Voyager gauge cluster. Uh, let's see what came in the box. In the box, model 912502, specific to the KLR650, 1995 to 2007. The only thing that really makes it specific is the engine temp sensor, which is right here. This is what makes it specific. It comes with the one that is made for the correct coolant hose size. And each piece comes with instructions. Got this guy, sensor that'll only fit in the one that it's supposed to go with. Next up, we got this over here, the ignition sensor with instructions to put it on. No instruction with this one, but it's red and black. It's got to be power and ground. Wheel sensor with this to determine speed. It does do GPS, but it is meant mostly to use this because it's more accurate and there's specific instructions on the back side that tell you how to measure your wheel size. Go by that, determine, do some math, figure out what number to program in. Another neat thing about the Voyager is that it gives you the option to set the odometer one time so that you don't get accused of any odometer fraud. So this becomes the only thing that you have on there. Now like I said last time, it didn't come with a mount to put the LEDs on for neutral, high beams, and turn signal. So I had to add those and I'll be running those as soon as I can. I plan to use as much of the original wiring harness as possible. Might even just cut the old one off so I can use the same thing. And since I'll be cutting them off, I'll actually get to use all this shrink wrap that I bought. Alright, in my particular installation, I gotta take one of these out, which this happens to be a six millimeter. So we'll see that's tight, too tight. And if you like me and that's a little tight for you, you can always use the cheater method. And the bolt replacing it just happens to be 12 millimeters, and you gotta fight it to get it on there because it's magnetic. This is not to over tighten it, only go to 12 foot pounds in the instructions. So there we go. Actually, I'm going to take that back out because I don't want that to fall out on its own. I'm going to grab some Loctite. Alright, this is as clean as this part of the bike has ever been. I just took the time, washed it real good, because you only get one chance with this. Alright, a little bit of math later, me screwing up and not converting to millimeters gave me 2153. I then bumped it up to 2154, realizing that I was just two millimeters under to come up with that, and I was measuring the old wheels. So, once again, we check this, we spin the wheel, what do we get? I can't spin it fast enough to register, so I just move the sensor back and forth across the magnet and we get a speed so that tells me it is in fact reading where'd it go there it is oh good I'm gonna go ahead and lock this down the way it should be now after a few minutes of fighting with these which were oh so close to pulling through I mean if I really wanted to fight it I could decide to give up those are kind of weak anyway 
I'm just gonna go with these. These um, these are actually meant for cooling ducts. Well, ducts in the home anyway, and they are super heavy duty. So I have no fear about these ever coming off when they shouldn't. And of course, I admit, it's a little overkill, sure. But I really don't want this thing just coming off. So there we go. I'll button up the rest of it in a second here. So there it is. Follows up. Got a zip tie here. And that's about the time I stopped following it. One neat trick. Remember, this is your brake line. You don't need to over tighten these. However, if you put where the zip tie comes together on the side of this cable, it creates a nice little place for it to stay and it won't come loose. If you tried to tighten it over here, you'd have that and you'd have an area for this and it might wobble, you might lose it somewhere. So this is actually the most secure way you can do it. I did not do that down here, but this is an example. See, you have a gap there and gaps here, but this is a huge head. If I had put this over here, it's a good chance it would get caught up on the brake, and we don't want that. I still decided to feed it through here, left a little slack, goes in, and it's plugged in. Now the neat thing about the Voyager is none of these connectors are the same, so you cannot plug it in the wrong way. Let's move on to the next sensor. All right, for this part, all this says is we have to take the red wire wrapped around here five times. Now, that might be easy, but I don't think it would stay very well. So after I wrap it, I'm going to double wrap it with some electrical tape and then fish it back up. And like that, got it electrical tape, zip ties, and I'm back up here under. Good thing I found this the other day. Comes up, goes in, and I've got it plugged in already. The only thing left is to turn the bike on and test it, but since I have no tank and no gas, we're just going to have to leave this one to faith until I get that far. Okay, the last sensor. Yeah, I'm going to put it here because this is the output to the engine. If you follow the flow, pushes this way, goes in, comes out, goes over here to the radiator on the other side, and the cycle happens. And I want the temperature to be red at the hottest point that's going to be coming out. In order to do this properly requires that I drain the coolant, which needs to happen anyway. So I can flush it before the riding season. A key note, take this screw out before you take the cap off the radiator. That way it won't leak all over. This would be one of those times if you have a proper hose cutting tool, use it. Otherwise, improvise. Now, I just need to figure out how much of this guy to cut. I'm just gonna take a little off those sides. Normally, I would just test fit this, take it out, put these on, but I've had instances where I can't get this back off, and I don't want that to happen here. So, yeah, I got a feeling that was going to happen, so good for me. All right, so after a bit of fighting, there we go. Just retighten these, pipe the wire, and see how it works. Well, all right, guys. That about wraps it up for today. Everything is plugged in except one thing. Power. But the power requires some soldering. And I don't want to get into soldering until I'm ready to solder everything I need to get done. So that's it. Sensor installed on the Voyager. We'll figure out what we do next week. I have no idea. Maybe I'll replace the coolant. Maybe the bolts I ordered will come in and I'll be able to replace a bunch of missing things on the bike. Or maybe I'll just do some paint prep. I don't know. Till next time.